During last night's Democratic debate, some 2020 candidates, including veteran Pete Buttigieg, vowed to pull all troops out of Afghanistan earlier than their pre early in their presidency. Listen. Will you withdraw all U.S. service members by the end of your first year in office? We will withdraw. We have to. In your first year? Yes. I would in my first term in office. It's time to bring those service members back home from Afghanistan. All right, our next guest says they're pandering to voters and should explain how they really keep us safe. Making his debut as a Fox News contributor as of this Wednesday morning. Congratulations. Is our friend Joey Jones, retired U.S. Marine Corps bomb tech. Joey, welcome to the family. Good morning, guys. Thank Good you morning. very much. And on your first day, uh, we gave you the assignment, watch the debate last night. What did you make of those two talking about uh, pulling our troops out? Well, I, I think Jake did a good job as a moderator. I'm glad this question came up. But unfortunately, you cannot honestly ask that question without immediately following up with, and what are you going to do differently, or what will you do to keep us safe from threats in places like Afghanistan? It's simply not enough in 2019 or 2020 to say, I'm going to pull troops out. We've had now three administrations in a row somehow say they're going to end the war, have ended the war, or going to pull troops out, yet troops are still in Afghanistan. Uh, contingents are still all over the Middle East, and it's because there's a threat there. Now, we can have the debate on how to best um, overcome that threat or best monitor it or best keep it off our shores, but to simply stand up there and say, I'll pull all the troops out of Afghanistan, where your three predecessors didn't, and they all agreed with you when they were on that stage. And so if you don't at least take time to understand why they don't agree with you now that they've become president, yeah. then your, your promise to pull them out is empty. And any time a, or a candidate says, uh, you know, something along the terms of, I will probably do this or I'm going <laughs> to do that. It's just a, it's an empty promise. Mm -hmm. It's not based on fact. It's based on trying to achieve votes. Joey, Tim Ryan was the only candidate at the, at the beginning of the debate when they played the Star Spangled Banner that, that stood on the stage and did not put his <laughs> hand over his heart. Ari Fleischer was tweeting about it, said, guess that he's appealing to the Kaepernick wing. Megan McCain said, put your hand over your heart, Tim Ryan. What did you think? You know, when you exist in a culture uh, that the Democratic Party and most progressives and liberals in this country have created, where it's almost faux pas to observe the anthem and or observe our flag, it makes sense that you might put something like, you know, honoring this ceremony that observes our freedoms as a low priority and then all, all of a sudden forget to do it at all. Probably he just got nervous, which isn't very presidential in my respect either. So, you know, the big thing about it was you had to know this guy's name to call him out. Most people didn't even know his name. So I thought it was kind of funny that maybe that's his one way to stand out among 20 other candidates. Unfortunately, it's not the right way. Well, uh, but probably he got nervous. But, but, yeah, here's what he said to a reporter. He said, I love this country as much as uh, everybody else. Doesn't explain why he didn't put his hand on his heart. I don't yeah. know if it was intentional or not. But on the pullout from Afghanistan in particular, uh, is the president's uh, pullout, uh, proposed pullout, where the peace talks are going, does that get you nervous? No, because at least I understand the thought process here. If Afghanistan can find some sort of peace that guarantees us we won't have a threat like um, al-Qaeda or the Taliban or ISIS coming from it, then we're a part of that negotiation and it's a part of our strategy. Standing on a debate stage with no access to any of that information or understanding of that strategy, promising to blindly pull troops out is not a strategy. I didn't like it when Republicans talked about it in 2016. I don't like it in 2020 when Democrats do it for no other reason than to win votes. At least with the White House, we hear there's a strategy. Listen, right. Afghanistan wants to do peace talks with the Taliban, or, and this is how they're going to do it. Doesn't mean I like it necessarily, but at least I understand it. Unlike the 2020 Democrats who are just simply trying to have something gotcha. new to bring to the table for the, for the sake of newness. Uh, at the debate last night uh, were three students uh, from high school, I think in Lansing, Michigan, who I believe took a knee uh, as an homage to uh, Colin Kaepernick. They were the uh, guests of uh, Beto O'Rourke. What would you think about that? Look, I have no problem with Beto deciding who he's going to bring uh, to his debate. And I have no problem with these students. Listen, they're high school kids. They're not adults yet. They're on their way. They're easily impressionable. And they were inspired by Colin Kaepernick in a way that I just don't understand. What's more important to me is that if you're polling at 
If you're living in the state of Texas as a liberal and you can't yeah. even win a Senate seat there, if you're not doing well with the American people, perhaps find something that isn't inherently divisive to adhere yourself to. I mean, if you're at 0%, you can either go up and out. So maybe this is the last shot across the bow. I'm not sure. But Colin Kaepernick yeah. showed us last month exactly what his uh, gotcha. protests were about. And it wasn't about policing. It was about a disdain for this country and its history and the way we've overcome it. And we're not quite up the snuff for him. And uh, so if you're going to adhere yourself to that kind of message, good luck, because you're not going to win that nomination and you're certainly not going to win the presidency. Okay. All right. Joey, thanks so much for being with us. Welcome to the Fox family. We're so glad you're now a Fox News contributor. Congratulations. It's truly an honor. Thank you no so much. No one deserves right. it more than Great you. You sacrificed right. a lot for our country. and We love you for it. Thank you. Congratulations.